Today we'll catch up with winemaker Ray Signorello and find out what it takes to create wines that draw critical acclaim and countless awards. We'll visit him at his 100 acre property located in the south end of the Silverado Trail along the east side of Napa Valley. I think it's important we start with the estate uh, here in Napa Valley. What is it about this estate that's important for people to know? It's just under 100 acres, so we're not buying grapes from other parts of Napa Valley. We plant it ourselves, so we control everything from the grapes all the way to the production and the bottling. It's really, you know, family-owned, handcrafted, estate grown and bottled. That's really what we're all about. Not everybody's had a chance to have old vines in Napa Valley. You've got a bunch. Yeah, the vines here are about uh, approaching 35 years old in the Chardonnay and about 28 years on the Cabernet. So old vines, low yields, that's mm -hmm. really what gives us the quality on the property. Well, your wines are, are often rich and dense, but lean too. There, there is a Euro style to it. Is that, is that a focus in the winery when you're making the wines? So our wines are classic, you know, they're unfiltered, they're fermented with wild yeast, they're not sweet, they don't have sugar in them, and they're made, you know, to go with food. Mm -hmm. You come from a fine wine drinking background. Not many people making wine have that. How does that, you know, shape the way that you make wine? Well, that's kind of my R&D, if you will. I, uh, I have a seller of different wines from around the world, and I use those examples to try to make my wines better. You're not that old a guy, but you've already done nearly 30 vintages here at the property. How would you characterize your style as a winemaker? I think it's all about handcrafted. So uh, again, this, these old vines, the low yields, but then in the winemaking side of it, we try to be as uh, non-interventionist as possible. If you're used to wines that uh, are jammy, mine's kind of on the other end of that spectrum. Yeah. It uh, has a, an old world character to it. You have two King Piece wines here, the Padron and the Signorello Estate Cabernet Sauvignon. How would you like people to look at those two wines? So Padroni is our top wine. It's our, it's our top growth, our first level wine. It's the best of the best. It's uh, Padroni means the head of the family. Uh, it is honor of my father, a tribute mm -hmm. to my father. Uh, the Estate Cabernet is the same winemaking. It's the same grapes. It's just a selection of different parcels off the property. And the wine tends to be a little softer, maybe a little more approachable, younger. So this is a kind of more zero to 10 to 12 year range, 10, maybe even 15 years. Padroni is something that as good as it is today, you know, you can put it in your cell and not worry about it 20 years from now, and it'll be that good. But this part of Napa where we are is very cool. So we're about five degrees cooler than say St. Helena, and that gives the ability to make a wine that ages well, has a little more of that Euro characteristic to it. Mm -hmm. You also have a Chardonnay that you've named after your mother. Yeah, we make a wine called Hope's Cuvée Chardonnay. So it's uh, named after my mother, Hope Signorello. And essentially what it is, from the oldest vines on the property, old vine, low yield Chardonnay, no filtration. We only make about 400 cases a year. And in the style of a Grand Cru White Burgundy. Do you have your hands in, in uh, other projects as well here in Napa? Yeah, what I did is I took what I learned at Signorello and applied it to three other projects, all Cabernets. Mm -hmm. So Trim is kind of my easy drinking, affordable Cabernet from the Lake County. And then Edge is my uh, affordable Napa Valley Cabernet, mm -hmm. uh, blended with a little bit of Merlot Cab Franc. And then the newest project is called Fuse, and it's just coming out right now, 2013 Fuse. And you picked a great vintage to launch it in. I did. <laughs> Well, Ray, when you started out, actually, when I started out as well, everybody was sort of chasing Bordeaux, Burgundy, Champagne. That was the, the, the benchmark. You're by all that now. What does the next 10 years look like for you here in Napa Valley at Signorello? Now I think we've found our own way. Napa yeah. Valley is making some of the greatest Cabernet really in the world. And what I'm trying to do every year is just kind of each year it's a little bit of a tweak. And uh, the next 20, 30 years, uh, hopefully make uh, some wines that'll be maybe even better than what I'm doing today.